You might have heard of this young preacher called to his first congregation, and he gave this wonderful sermon. Everyone was just ooing and aahing about this sermon, and they were so excited to hear the second sermon. And when they heard the second sermon, they realized it was the same sermon he gave the first time. So they were a little concerned. But they said, he's young, he doesn't, you know, maybe he's nervous. So he preached the third sermon, it was the same sermon. They had an emergency meeting of the council and they told the president, you have to go talk to this pastor. So the president went and talked to the pastor and said, you know, it's a very good sermon. Oh, thank you very much, said the pastor. But you know, you can't preach the same sermon over and over and over again. You have to preach some new material. And the pastor said, well, when I see some change, I'll preach a new sermon. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, his Son, our risen Lord. Amen. He has risen. He has risen this reading is, as the kids were talking about, uh, traditionally called the Great Commission, or unfortunately, sometimes called the Great Omission. Jesus gathered his 11 disciples and commissioned them to continue the work that he has done. For a number of reasons, Christians have been intimidated by this. Many of them have been so intimidated that they are paralyzed and they do nothing. Or some of them analyze this so much that they're paralyzed, you know, paralysis through analysis. I think it's important for us to get back to the basics in dealing with this. In a former life, I was a swimmer, a competitive swimmer and a coach. I swam for my high school swim team, Brentwood swim team, and we swam against teams in our area and we always lost to the West Islip swim team. The West Islip swim team always won the championship in our conference. After high school, I was a lifeguard and had the opportunity to work with some of the swimmers from that swim team. And I wanted to find out what was the secret to their success. So one of the guys that swam for, swam for them, this guy Carl, I talked to him and I asked him, you know, what kind of practices did you, you know, what, what did you guys do for workouts? He said, oh, all we did was work on the basics and sprints. Work on the basics and sprints. Our team, we used to do all these different land exercises, creative things, um, put in all kinds of mileage. They just did the basics and, and, swam, and swam sprints. One of the greatest basketball coaches of all time is the coach of the San Antonio Spurs, Greg Popovich or Pop, as they call him. He is a Hall of Fame coach. They said if you go to one of his practices, you will not be impressed at all, because all they do is the basics, the fundamentals. His team always makes the playoffs, yet all they do in practice is the basics, the fundamentals. I think we complicate the Great Commission. So much that we get scared, confused, and we turn it into the great omission. Sometimes we even compliment it so much that we don't even recognize when we're fulfilling this, that we're already doing, sometimes already doing what Jesus commands us to do. It's kind of like the sheep and the goats, where Jesus said to the ones on the right, the sheep, I was hungry and you fed me, you gave me something to drink, you clothed me, visited me. And the ones on the right said, when? When did we do that? 
They didn't realize it. They just did it naturally. I think that's the best. I think um, as Marilee started off uh, explaining the worship backwards, I think it helps us if we look at this reading backwards. In the, at the end of this reading, Jesus says, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. We are not alone. We have the best wingman ever. We have the best helper ever. We need to remember that. That is so important. Jesus is with us. We don't do this alone. Next, he says, teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. This is key. Don't we complicate it? Don't we think, oh no, everything? I have to memorize everything? I have to memorize the whole Bible, all the commandments, all the verses, all the ordinances? No, you don't have to remember every commandment, every verse, every ordinance in the Bible. You don't have to be able to explain it or understand it or answer every question. Go back to the basics. You got this. You know, in Matthew 22, somebody came up to Jesus and said, what's the greatest com teacher? Which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's pretty much all the scripture to that point. All in the law and the prophets are from these two commandments. Jesus simplifies it even more in John 13. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you, should also, you also should love one another. Let's not complicate matters. Love others as Jesus loves us. It might sound simple. It is simple, but it, it's hard, but it's simple. Jesus not only loved those who loved him, Jesus loved those who worshiped him, but Jesus also loved those who doubted, those who hated him. Love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. St. Francis said, preach the gospel at all times, sometimes using words. In other words, tell people about Jesus at all times, sometimes use words. Live your life loving people through your actions, sometimes tell them with words. Sometimes you tell them that you love them because Jesus loves you. We've all heard of, I think primarily fathers, good fathers, you know, not all fathers are good, unfortunately, but good, loving fathers who their children know that they love them. They have shown them, shown them that they love them through their actions, through the way they love them and the way they love people around them. But some of those children still need to hear the words, I love you. Some of them still need to hear the words even when they're adults. Sometimes, in some way, people need to know in words that God loves them. Of course, we don't force it down their throats. But in some way, letting them know that God loves them. Last but le not least, I want to share a little Greek with you. Um, the word go, as in go and make disciples of all nations. The word go is often translated as a command, an imperative. 
That's why we use this reading, you know, to call and to send out missionaries or to call and send out pastors, which is great. But the Greek word here for go is a participle. It's not an imperative, meaning under the conditions of going, make disciples of all nations. Under the conditions of going, make followers, students of Jesus. I like to translate it, as you are going. So we could say, as you are going, make disciples of all nations. Maybe God is leading you to be a full-time missionary. Maybe God is leading you to be a pastor. Maybe God's leading you to do some other career, some other job, some other responsibility. And maybe you're called to another city, another town, another country, or maybe right here in Red Wing. As you are going, make disciples of all nations. As you are going, make disciples by loving one another as Jesus has loved you. As you are going, wherever you go, whatever you do, love one another as Jesus has loved you. Let us not be intimidated by this great commission. It's an honor, it's a privilege to work for, for Jesus. Let us answer the call. After all, Jesus promised that we won't do it alone. He says, I am with you to the end of the age. Let us do this. And then Jesus, like the preacher, may give us something else. Or maybe there isn't anything else. Maybe all there is is to love one another as Jesus has loved us. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.